Mankind has been going through a tremendous transition phase in recent times. Well, in one hand, we are facing huge energy demand on global scale. On the other, we are daily fighting issues of biodiversity loss and climate change. Therefore, we have a tremendous pressure to reduce this carbon footprint and shift towards an alternative and renewable form of energy. At present, we have a large number of renewable and sustainable forms of energy like solar power, wind energy, hydrothermal energy, etc. And they are really doing good. Still more than 70% of our energy needs are being fulfilled by fossil fuels. And it's time that we must reduce the percentage. United Nations has therefore issued 17 sustainable development goals and countries are doing really good. India on the other hand has also made five places that is Pancha Amrit at United Nations Climate Change Conference at Glasgow COP26. According to which, you know, we as an Indian must go carbon neutral by 2070. Also, we must have more than 50% of our energy demand from renewable sources. That means more than 500 gigawatts of energies need to be produced from renewable sources. Therefore, we have a huge responsibilities on our shoulders. Hi, this is Pranab Jyoti Sharma. I am a research scholar at School of Energy Science and Engineering, IIT Guwahati. So today I am here to talk about a new and renewable and sustainable form of energy technology. Have you ever wondered that the plant you see all around has the potential to produce electricity and at the same time conserve biodiversity? Yes, you heard it right. I am talking about a revolutionary idea called plant microbial fuel cell. So let's go to my lab and let's see how does it work. So plants are known to produce their own food by the very well known process called photosynthesis, right? So when plant produces their own food, a large part of that food that is the organic matter that they produce uh, is being wasted. Wasted in the sense they are released through their root exodus into the soil. So this percentage varies from 60 to 70 percent. So those uh, organic matter that are released by the plant uh, through the root system is being utilized by the microorganism that lives near the soil surfaces. They are normally the anaerobic microorganisms which lives without oxygen. So they break down the food particle into electrons and protons. So if you can insert two electrodes near the soil surface, ultimately you can produce electricity, right? So this is the way you produce electricity which is green, sustainable, renewable and at the same time you produce uh, biomass and in this process plants do not lose anything and in return we get electricity. So this is a win-win situation wherein uh, we do not have to give anything uh, to the plant. If you can take care of your plant, the plant will produce electricity. So this plant-based fuel cell can be implemented in all households. I mean we normally grow indoor-based plant, right? And the indoor-based plants are known to uh, absorb different types of pollutant that is prevailing in the inside atmosphere. And you would be surprised to know that indoor-based air pollution is known to be one of the very, very serious air pollution in the world. So if you go to NASA's website, you will find a large number of indoor-based air pollutants prevail inside the uh, inside environment. And these different types of indoor plants that we grow inside our room, inside our balcony has the potential to capture those harmful chemicals and in return gives you purified air. So definitely a plant based fuel cell, especially the indoor based plant based fuel cell are a very a sustainable way to produce bioelectricity, right? And this can be implemented all around. I mean, you can grow this kind of indoor plants uh, inside your house, uh, inside the educational institutes like the one I am standing right now inside the airport and if you want to go for large scale implementation of this plant based fuel cell, it can be extended to the wetlands, the, the bathing fields and also in the city. You know I am living in Guwahati city and uh, we have a large number of uh, buildings and constructions going on all around because of which an, a large number of biodiversity loss has been witnessed in last, last 10 to 20 years and uh, because of which we encounter a artificial flood, there is loss of biodiversity all around the Guwahati city. So this kind of biodiversity uh, can be restored in the urban areas where you can go for this kind of um, fuel cell in rooftops and in balconies and in education institutes that I have mentioned. So let us go to my lab right now and let us see how this plant cell works. So I am inside my laboratory. So this is the plant based fuel cell setup 
uh, we have grown different types of plant fuel cell here. These are all indoor plants that you normally grow inside your home. So right now I have incorporated here 6 to 7 base uh, fuel cells. So what we have to do is that from a single plant fuel cell the energy producing uh, produce is very low actually which is not able to uh, translate into practical application. So you need to connect different types of fuel cell all together and uh, finally if I connected all these fuel cells have been connected. If I show you the voltage that is generated from this uh, 6 to 7 fuel cell you will find that with the help of a voltmeter. I can see there around 4 volt uh, energy uh, voltage has been generated, right. So this 4 volt energy is more than sufficient to drive practical application. So for our study we have incorporated different types of fuel cell. Throughout my PhD career a total uh, design evolution process has taken place. So therefore we have different types of fuel cell you have seen here this is a 3 chamber fuel cell. Uh, the middle one is a anode chamber. The flanking on the other side these are two cathode chamber. We have another three chamber fuel cell which have a narrow bottom for more uh, development of anaerobic condition inside. We have other two types of uh, two, two, two chamber fuel cell as well and uh, we have some compact three chamber fuel cell as well. So the final working mechanism is that uh, this, this is the plant that is uh, carrying out photosynthesis. So here inside we have artificial lighting condition. So when they produces food by using photosynthesis they releases the unused organic matter into the into the anode here the uh, microorganism breaks down this organic matter and in turn produces electron and proton so we have incorporated here electron uh, electrodes as well those electrodes also we have carried out some kind of modification uh, using uh, the electrode material is a basic carbon fiber material and for the transport of the electron from one chamber to another we have incorporated a membrane. Normally uh, you will find the nephion membrane, nephion 117 membrane is a very very commercially available membrane but it is very very costly and that is why we have incorporated we have made our own ceramic based membrane which is very cheap and uh, those membrane we have incorporated here. We have done a thorough membrane characterization where I have seen the potential of this membrane and the best membrane which we have found among all the different types of ceramic membranes have been incorporated in all this plant based fuel cell. So as I have said uh, around 4 volt of voltage is being produced from all this plant fuel cell but that voltage you cannot directly uh, use because the current rating the current that they produces is very very low and that is why the first of all we collect all the energy that is being produced by all these plants into one supercapacitor we have used here. So all this energy we collectively collect and store inside the supercapacitor right. So after that by using a boost converter which has the capacity to boost the voltage uh, is being a it is a typical electronic circuit that boost converter helps to boost the voltage and this voltage is being stored in a uh, rechargeable lithium polymer battery. So after that that lithium polymer battery is used to drive the practical application where you have incorporated one LED bulb. So when we talk about the practical application of plant based fuel cell you know right now uh, in this 21st century I think the smart watch that I am wearing is one of the very very versatile and is being mostly used by people you know around the world I mean this has the lot of potential and lot of uh, multitasking abilities like you, you can monitor your health and you can monitor different types of things. So our intention was to charge a smartwatch as well as the truly wireless device that uh, normally the earphone that we use. We have been able to charge this uh, smartwatch as well as wireless uh, earphone by using this plant fuel cell. So that is one of the achievement that we have been able to incorporate. So to make the working of this PMFC more sustainable we have incorporated uh, microalgal based biocathode here. So biocathode in the sense in the surface of the cathode you know you will get a very beautiful looking uh, microbial biofilm that is developed by using this micro microorganisms mainly the uh, microalgae in the cathode as well as the anaerobic bacteria on the surface of the anode right. So this microalgae we have grown in our own laboratory by using the uh, waste food products. So that is entirely sustainable and when you use this kind of artificial light inside this, these lights uh, they, they, they grow in the photo period of 12 by 12 hours, 12 hours light and day night conditions. So inside the same conditions I mean you can develop bioelectricity by using fuel also you can harvest those algae once they grow once the biomass increases and that can be used to develop other uh, value added products like 
biodiesel, bioethanol by using biorefinery approach. So, this is a total collective approach where you can develop electricity as well as other value added product by using microalgae. So, I believe that you have liked the concept of plant based fuel cell. With your support, I think we can grow more plants and produce more bioelectricity in the process. And this World Environment Day, let's pledge that all of us will put our effort to make this world a greener and a better place to live in.